I will focus on the burden of non-communicable disease and injuries uh, in Zimbabwe, actually, where we are just looking at uh, the trends. It's mainly on non-communicable diseases. Communicable diseases, there is a lot of information around communicable diseases. But in terms of um, non-communicable diseases, we don't have much information uh, in Zimbabwe. So I'll quickly go over uh, this presentation just to show you the trends uh, which are happening uh, in Zimbabwe uh, in terms of non-communicable diseases. So this presentation, I adopted it um, from the NCD from the... Now, uh, one of the things we need to understand, um, there's been a change actually within, within our country where now I think there is now a department of non-communicable diseases uh, within the Minister of uh, Health. And there's actually a deputy director, I think a director, I think a deputy director who are heading this department. So as a country, we are also really moving uh, and try to recognize non-communicable diseases. Our focus for the previous year is mainly on, uh, on communicable diseases. And we've got very strong programs, you know, around HIV, around TB, around malaria. But if you look in non-communicable diseases, our, um, our programs within the ministry, they are not yet very, you know, very strong. But at the moment, I think there are plans actually to strengthen those, um, you know, that unit. That's why you now have got this, non this NCD department, the director, the deputy director, that's where most of these other non-communicable diseases um, you know, are now falling. And there's also been development actually of a strategy uh, within, within, uh, within this unit. So I'm also going to share with you some of the documents which this department uh, is developing to try and address uh, some of these non-communicable uh, diseases. So as I mentioned uh, from the statistics from the National uh, Institute of Health Metrics, at the moment actually NCDs are emerging as a serious threat uh, to Zimbabwe and they are more of really you know, undermining uh, development. Remember, uh, because of the associated morbidity and mortality of associated mo mo mort mortality and morbidity, you then have you know, those issues uh, affecting the general uh, development of the country through, you know, um, you're you you losing the skilled labor, you know, you're using people, you're losing people who are really trained issues to do with people taking time off. And also, you know, the resources which you end up using, uh, you know, to manage those people. So those things, if not addressed, they will then really affect, uh, you know, the development uh, of the country. So, in terms of uh, within the, as I mentioned, uh, to say at the moment as a country, we are currently having a challenge uh, of NCDs, uh, you know, coming. And if you go within the ministry corridor, you hear now people they talk of um, we are having a double burden of disease. Usually, we use initially we used to talk only of HIV and TB uh, and malaria. But now we are now really also talking of, uh, more of the NCDs. So there's a demographic and a biological shift um, towards NCDs. And most burden uh, for these uh, NCDs is concentrated at district and sub-district level. That's where most of these um, that's where really most of these patients are uh, they tend to uh, you know uh, to present. And because of you know issues to do with uh, you know challenges in terms of really moving from one you know being transferred for, for better care, I hope you all know we don't have uh, a lot of um, you know trained doctors actually within a district level. So it means really most uh, the way most of these conditions then you know uh, these patients are managed, uh, it becomes a challenge. So it is really of paramount importance actually to then try and improve the capacity of district hospitals and clinics uh, for them to be able to manage these, uh, these patients. We have seen donors really uh, going to districts uh, at district level, they provide people with BP machines, you know, with, with scales, you know, some of those things as a way of trying to really to capacitate people to understand how to manage these NCDs. But generally, this is not really, you know, we don't have, uh, if you, yeah, in terms of the actual financing, 
at that level, most of our funding within this country, most of the donors, the PEPFAS, the Global Fund, the TFID, most of their funding really goes to, you know, to infectious disease. And we don't have uh, funders really coming to, coming to support NCDs within our country. So in general, we can say NCDs, actually they are being neglected in Zimbabwe. We, yeah, so I think that's the, like the overall actually, statement which we can say, yes, we are trying to really put systems to, to address how NCDs are being managed. But generally, we still have a challenge. Funders are not interested actually in really, ah, they are interested, but actually maybe we don't have, you know, there are no funds to really address this issue. The priority being to address uh, infectious, um, infectious disease. One of the things which is which I need to, to, um, to also mention, which is very clear, NCDs, they go, you know, people they only think maybe NCDs is um is cardiovascular disease, cancers, diabetes, but they also include chronic respiratory diseases, things like asthma, things like chronic empire, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Things like emphysema, they really they are some of the NCDs. But when we talk of uh, NCDs, we tend to to think maybe it's only about cardiovascular diseases, our hypertension, our stroke, blah blah blah. But actually, it goes actually more to include other diseases like trauma injuries. And I hope you are going to have a lesson on uh, on trauma where we discuss these things, things to do with eyes. Actually, these are also chronic diseases and mental health. And remember, at the moment, um, as a country, and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been an actual an out, like an increase um, in mental health issues now, you know, because people are stressed. People, you know, this issues to do with lockdown, each then they bring, you know, stress in terms of how to survive, gender-based violence, among other issues actually with this COVID-19 uh, is brought. Then one of the interesting thing, remember guys, as we discussed with you, one of the things which, which, which we want you to, to capture uh, or master in the process, we expect you to also look for possible areas which you can do your research. And one of the areas which you can do your, 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 your core activities of learning, you can actually focus on, S, on NCDs. So this is very, if you look here, we are supposed to do, you know, some non-communicable disease risk factor survey, you know, periodically. But if you look in Zimbabwe, the last risk factor survey was done 15 years, 16 years ago, huh? you see? And when this, those things were done, the prevalence of diabetes was a 10%, hypertension a 30%. But I think if you repeat again, actually this survey now, we expect these figures to have, uh, to have gone up. So the challenge actually, which we have mainly with the NCDs, we don't have recent data. We don't have the recent data looking into NCDs. And actually within your district, as part of a project, it will be really interesting. We can also really remember the whole purpose of the field of the biological program is to bring um, data and evidence to the Minister of Health so that that data can assist in, uh, you know, in making policies. So you guys, if you, one of you is interested, you can actually do this as part of your, your, your thesis, your dissertation uh, for MPH. So yeah, make sure as you attend your lectures, the NC, for the various modules, we are really trying to see uh, the potential, the potential um, topics, which you can, um, the potential topics which you can uh, which you can conduct your uh, uh, and your research uh, uh, based on. So I'll then show you a few of the graphs which has been showing which have been developed by the NCD unit in terms of showing the trends. So this is 1990 and this is 2018. So in terms of the burden of disease, if you look in 1990 injuries, they constitute six percent. Then in 2018, they constituted 9%. Then communicable disease in um, 20 years ago, they constituted around 
But in terms of the burden, if you see now in 2018, there's been a huge increase uh, in terms of the burden, which is being caused by non-communicable disease to 33%, almost like a 10% 10, 10 increase. Then there's been a gradually a decrease uh, in non-communicable, uh, in communicable diseases. Your maternal, your and, 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 uh, and all, those, and all those other um, issues. Now they used to have 69% caused by communicable disease, but now they, there's a decrease um, you know, to around 50%. So the message, guys, is there is a shift, uh, you know, where the burden of non-communicable disease is increasing as compared to, to the previous uh, uh, period. So in terms of deaths, so this is the previous slide. I hope you know this. I'm not going to go in detail to explain this, but as your homework, make sure you understand the meaning of DALIs and the meaning of PALIs. And this is, what are DALIs? What are PALIs? How are they measured? But usually these are parameters which are used to measure, you know, um, the burden of the disease. So make sure you read these things to understand them. Otherwise, yeah, I won't really take my time to, to explain these things, but I expect after the lecture, you understand that. Then in terms of deaths, um, in terms of deaths, at 2018, injury is 9%, non-communicable disease, 33%, and most of the deaths actually, they are due to um, communicable, um, communicable disease. Then if you then split these things further now, if you then split these, um, these non-communicable uh, disease, uh, disease, these diseases further in terms of the, the non-communicable disease, you realize we have what we call the big four uh, non-communicable disease, which actually really constitute more than 50% of the NCDs uh, in Zimbabwe. So you realize most of our, um, yes, we have got these other things, they are substance abuse, neurologic or mental, blah, blah, blah. But most of um, our, our NCDs, uh, we have got cancers, they constitute 12% followed by cardiovascular diseases. Remember cardiovascular diseases, this is your hypertension, your stroke, and this is, uh, your myocardial infarction, all those things, they fall under, under cardiovascular diseases, followed by this. Then you have got your respiratory diseases, the chronic ones, your, um, your COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, your emphysema, they follow here. Then you have got your diabetes and your kidney disease. So these are like the really, you know, the bigger, the yeah, like they contribute most of the most of these other things. Yes, you got your injuries really, really coming here. But in terms of really most of these injuries, they are not like most of these, they are like road traffic injuries. And some of these they are you know, within the workplace. And this one, in terms of addressing them, it's not like really. The Minister of Health mandates to address injuries. I hope you um, we are going to do your when you do your occupational your occupational health and safety module. I think people from NASA will come and explain you know how they, how they also really try to address uh, some of these injuries. So it's not like really a Minister of Health alone issue to deal with injuries, but there are also you know issues to do with um, <clears throat> issues to do with road traffic accidents. There were the traffic, the traffic, whatever, the traffic and safety councils, but all those, uh, you know, they are really involved. So this one is more like a, a, a mount, is a mount, you know, a mount stakeholder issue as opposed to the highlighted for, though it is most of the um, most, though it is the higher, um, uh, the higher percentage. Then, as I saw, in terms of um, if you look. Uh, trend now. Remember, you have got your, 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 there's a legend here, which is showing communicable disease, NCDs, and injuries. So if you look in terms of age now, uh, the DALIs, uh, which are lost by, uh, uh, by NCD, you realize for the early, you know, for the early age, uh, you know, like uh, before, before five years, most of the DALIs, uh, due to NCDs are caused by what are caused by communicable, uh, communicable, you know, maternal and neonatal uh, diseases. But as you as you move now with age now from you know uh, with age, remember 
we discussed one of the risk factors for non-communicable disease as age. As you move with age, you then realize that you then realize that um, here yeah, now most of the gullies are due to non-communicable diseases. And if, if you go, you know, people were above were above 40 years and you start going blah blah blah, you know, you, you tend to have more of the NCDs uh, and it's more of the NCDs um, and fewer of the non-communicable disease and it, uh, happen in them. Then uh, in terms of deaths, it's the same pattern here. Eh? Most of the deaths which happens early on, you know, you have got your neonatal sepsis, all those things you know, happening, all, you know, early on your pneumonia, whatever. They really cause most of the deaths um, uh, during the early years, which are not non-communicable. If you have got communicable disease causing deaths here, most of them, they are those congenital really, you know, abnormalities, you know, where people are born with. So that's, but most of the infections here is due to what is due to communicable disease. But the same trends now with death now as you go, you know, at around age 40 years now, that's when you start to have more of the non-communicable disease really contributing what contributing to uh, uh, to deaths. Then it's the same again, you know, this is the list of um, of, of non-communicable disease and the deaths which are caused by each of those uh, with age. So you see, most of our deaths here within our country, they are caused by cardiovascular diseases where you put more, you know, in the same pattern again of these, of the cardiovascular diseases followed by green, this is diabetes, the chronic respiratory disease and your diabetes, you tend to have more of this with age. But in terms of really causing most of the deaths, most of the deaths are caused by a cardiovascular, what, by cardiovascular um, um, diseases. So it's the same graph also comparing this. So I think, yeah, I'll give you these notes actually where you can, you can really go. Remember, in terms of, uh, we also discussed the bits when we, when I introduced non-communicable disease in terms of the risk, um, in terms of the risk, uh, you know, the risk factor for NCDs. So GBD, it means the global burden of disease risk factors. If you go on the internet, you can actually Google the documents which are released by World, by, by World Health Organization on a regular basis where they you know where they report on the global burden of uh, of diseases looking both into communicable non-communicable diseases and from those you then realize that these are like like um you know like the risk factors they would your metabolic your environmental your behavioral your and all those things really um contributing to non-communicable disease but one thing we is interested now is this most of the non-communicable disease which we have, they cannot be attributable to, and to, to, to non-risk factors, which means there might be really some other underlying issues which might, uh, which might cause uh, non-communicable disease, which really calls for further studies to really investigate, uh, investigate that. So this is the same thing again, in terms of the risk factors by disease category, if you look at cancers now, these are the these are the risk, you know, the categories of the risk factors. So if you look, let's say we are looking at cancers, neoplasm. Most of the risk factors which cause neoplasm, they has to do with behavioral and environmental, which takes the bigger watch, uh, the bigger chunk. But uh, things to do with other whatever other things they are less. Like if you check for this, these are um, injuries. So it's mainly has to do with environmental uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and behavior as a risk factor for causing this. Um. Then this just this diagram is just showing uh, some in terms of injuries within the Zimbabwe. Remember, as I mentioned uh, previously, to say our injuries we have got both injuries which are caused by road traffic uh, road traffic accidents. And we also have injuries which are which happen within the workplace. So in terms of road traffic um, accidents, we have actually what you call black, black spots actually, and it are uh, within the country where most of the most of these uh, most of these road traffic accidents okay. 
like uh, I don't I know Makuti, I don't know I don't know the area, but I know there this is the area I think which I think that there are a lot of caves, you know, in this area. I don't know, maybe people, some of you might know the area. And there's been a program, actually, there's been some program within the government where they're trying to, you know, to widen this, to widen the area there because the road is also, it's also dead. So I think there's been much talk about the, the Chirundu, the Chirundu, whatever, the Arari Chirundu, these roads, where there's been efforts to widen, because if you look in this road alone, there are like one, two, three, four hot spots that is in that uh, in that road. Then there are also yeah, there are also various hot spots. And I know if you some of you, you can actually explain actually to say what are the reasons behind this uh, behind these um, these hot spots. I'm trying to look for some areas which I know and try to explain why maybe that area might be a hot spot. Uh, I don't know. I don't know much. Maybe there's pottery, but I don't know where it is. Maybe also causing this all other accidents. Maybe if you are going to Utare when you reach here, maybe that's the Christmas pass area. There's a lot of cave, blah blah blah. So it can also be a what uh, be a what spot. So yeah. So really, I think it's critical to really understand some of these what spots so that um, necessary measures uh, can be done, you know, by the country to try to address some of those issues. So remember. Public health is um what can I say is 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 more wider eh? and it some of the things which we end up looking at actually they really go beyond you know remember now yeah we are trying now I'm trying to analyze you know the, you know the hotspots and try to really you know um see what can be done to you know to address some of those issues. Then this is the road traffic accidents uh, in injuries in, by 2018 in Zimbabwe. Most of the roads, in terms of the, in terms of most accidents, Manikale is in the highest road traffic, in the highest accidents, uh, followed by Midlands. I think there are reasons here eh, why you have got more of these accidents, Manikale. Very interesting actual topics actually for you guys to do as part of your research is actually to see. Why do you have put more injuries in Manikal and as compared to other? What really you know factors? Where are these accidents occurred in Manikal? So these are interesting studies, which, which you can do. But if you go to Blawayo City, why do you have put so many? Yeah, I don't know Blawayo City, Blawayo Province. Why do you have less injuries in in Blawayo as compared to Manikal? But I thought. You are going to have more injuries, ah, but if you combine this and this, Arari province and Arari, whatever, you can have actually more. So there are things which you need to go and um and look into. Then, in terms of diabetes cases in Zimbabwe from January to September 2018, by also by province and by so you see most of the cases of diabetes were picked in Manikal and. These are, you remember, you have got diabetes follow up, then you have got new cases, and you have got uh, patients who are registered. So just remember some of these cases, you will see you have more cases of diabetes recorded in Arari. Why? Because Arari is a central, these are central hospitals. Patients are being re referred from the peripheries to these central hospitals. So this, this, these new cases might not be, and it might not be true actually. Why? Because these might be cases which are referred from rural hospitals. They come there, a diagnosis is then made, then it appears if you put more cases here as compared to other properties. So very interesting, you know, uh, things to look into in terms of trends for diabetes. Then the same for hypertension. Uh, you're yeah, also looking at the ages uh, and all those issues. So Arari also you have to have more. Manikal and you've got more Blawayo, Sito, they've got also have, um, uh, have more. Then breast cancer, the same pattern I was explaining to say, to say in Arare, you will see more of this being diagnosed. Why? It's not because they are actually, you know, they are, they are from Arare, but these are referral centers. So because of that now, because of that, you will have, uh, you know, more cases being picked. I don't know why my nickel and keeps on to feature. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some gynecologist or whatever in my nickel and, or yeah, something like that. Maybe there's some service why people go there 
and we end up having these things there in Manicala and more than other provinces. So some of these things might not reflect a true picture, but it's because of some of these centers, they have got specialist services and um, they have got specialist, specialists in those areas who actually then, what is happening, we are picking more cases as opposed to actually to say, yeah, it's more of like the diagnostic capacity, not that you have got more cases of breast cancer happening in our age compared to other profits. So as you read this data, just make sure you, you also try to, to answer this question. Why do we have more cases in some of these um, uh, places? Cancer of the cervix, you also have more in Harare because of the same reasons. Prostate cancer, you also have more in terms of the cases. You have the yeah, Harare or always top manika and Then you have machine also having um, uh, cases. So these ones, I will not go in detail, but these are the plans actually from the Minister of Health okay, in terms of uh, what they need to do. This was uh, in 2018, what they were planning in terms of really, um, really trying to, you know, to address the NCB issue. One of the, as I mentioned uh, in my one of the earlier slides, we lack data uh, on non-communicable disease within our country. The last survey was done in 2005. So there are plans actually to conduct um, another, um, another survey. I am not sure the progress to, to date, but last year I know there have been issues to, there have been plans to really engage the World Health Organization to get funding and also write a protocol, you know, a, a research on how to do these things so that another survey can be uh, can be conducted. I will check and update uh, the progress. Then there's been much talk um, about um, about Kenza. Uh, really, I will share with you the uh, the Kenza strategy. I think there's a strategy which was developed to try to address uh, to address uh, to address cancer, and also there are issues to to make sure we have got a cancer. Um, uh, a cancer forum where people they you know they meet on a quarterly basis to try and um and address uh, and uh, and discuss cancer issues. I hope you you know the same thing we should do in uh, in HIV programs and TB programs where we have these quarterly review meetings, partnership forums where we discuss HIV and TB issues. So the same actually should start happening uh, for some diseases like uh, like cancer. But one of the things which I have also noticed which is which has happened um, in terms of funding. I remember some time back, the National AIDS Council actually was also starting to fund, you know, to fund cancer. Why? Because uh, most of the cancer, um, I didn't give the statistics, but maybe when we discuss it later, they are caused by HIV. So because of that, the AIDS level actually has been used uh, of late to try and also um, address uh, some of those cancer issues. Then there are plans to develop and distribute guidelines to health facilities. Remember, I mentioned this. In terms of the capacity, actually, as a country to manage NCDs, um, we don't, you know, I'm not sure if they are now available, but as of last year, there were no guidelines actually on how to, you know, like, you know, the, the reference material. Yes, we always have our aid list. But you know, if you go for HIV, they've got for TB, they've got so many of these detailed guidelines, which looks into, you know, step by step, giving a healthcare worker the information, you know, the how information on how to manage some of uh, some of those uh, some of those conditions. So yeah, the same actually, we expect the same to to happen for you know for other um, for other you know for other um, conditions and for for NCDs. But I think I think I think the whole issue really comes to you know to funding, where you know if you have resources and funds, you should be able really to have some some desk you know some desk job aid which a okay, worker can refer to uh, how to manage uh, hypertension. And remember, some of the mostly if you check, I think there was some study. I will try and look for it. Where one of the researchers they looked into whether people were following guidelines in the management of hypertension uh, within Zimbabwe. 
So when they did that study, I think there was a lot of really, you know, people are like really managing the hypertension, you know, the way they think, you know, they don't like really follow the guidelines with which, which one is the first line, which one is the second line. So because of that, actually, it then becomes necessary to have guidelines which actually can assist the healthcare workers in a step by step, uh, you know, how to the choice of these drugs. So very interesting study also to really look, actually assess how some of these conditions are being managed. Are people following guidelines in terms of diabetes? Are all people, you know, like, uh, you know, the first line, the second line, but if you really trace it, you see a lot of issues in terms of how patients are being managed, where people, they end up getting maybe third line drugs, they are getting for first line, but there's no actual indication whether they do not do well on the first, or someone just goes straight to the third line drug. This is very common in uh, in private practice. Eh? If you go to GPs, I think people they yeah, people they tend to like these fancy drugs, you know, and they then think uh, you know people are being treated, but at the same time, that's not really recommended. That's what they need to have a stepwise following up um, um, uh, of the, the guidelines. Then some of the things uh, which the ministry has been planning to do is to develop a diabetes program. Then, but I think for diabetes, it's a with the ministry. Yes, we've got the diabetic association, which the deputy minister I think is uh, is very you know involved in, which is good. But in terms of having a national diabetes control program, we don't have that. Palliative care, we this if you have with palliative care, we have with your, your hospice, your island hospice actually really managing this thing. But I think this should be really part you know, of the primary health care delivery, uh, delivery system. And also there's also really misconception, you know, about the meaning of palliative care. Well, really people think palliative care is all about those, you know. Is all about those who are dying, those with cancer, blah blah blah. Actually, palliative care applies to almost all, you know, most of the diseases, and it has to start as soon as the diagnosis, uh, and it, as soon as the diagnosis of, of a condition is made. In our series of lectures, we are supposed to have a, a lecture. We are supposed to have had a lecture on palliative care, but in the files, in the folders, I will give you. Make sure you look into these, um, you know, issues to do with palliative care and understand them. Because um, we really need palliative care in terms of addressing uh, some of the communicable disease. Then the National Cancer Registry. Remember, most of the statistics which we get, um, which we get, um, which we get, which we get uh, about cancer, they are recorded in the National Cancer Watch Cancer Registry. So there are plans uh, to make sure. Uh, that registry is really is up to date and is providing recent um, recent information. Then, as I mentioned from the start, there are also plans to strengthen the national the NCD department. One last year, I remember when I was talking to the to, to one of the directors there. I think there were issues here in terms of staffing within the NCD department. You know, you can have a department where they say we have got a national NC department, we have got a director, you have got a deputy director. But if you look to the number of staff, maybe they are less than five or something like that. It doesn't really make it, <laughs> it doesn't really make a lot of uh, a lot of sense. So yeah, you can be a director of two people, you know, or you can be a director alone with your secretary. Then if you then go to district province level, district level, you don't have structures, you know, you don't have NCD structures. So how then, you know, do you then expect actually to, to really run a program, which is only an office, a head office, but if you go to province, if you go to districts, there's nothing. So I think some of those issues, eh? uh, I know some of you very soon you might be PMGs, you might be whatever, uh, working within minister hierarchy. Make sure you also really move and try to address um, uh, some of those issues. Then there were plans to establish an NCD interministerial task task force. Uh, yeah, this I remember. I think we always have challenges within our country to try to make sure some of our dreams materialize. So this whole idea started in around 20, 2014, but at the moment 
it still it still seems to be a challenge to actually have this in the ministry on uh, task force. So we have a lot of brilliant ideas and a lot of brilliant plans, which I believe uh, if these plans are implemented, our NCD program within the country will be you know will be much 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 much. Otherwise, this brings me to the end of my end of the, the lecture.